This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and the new format approaches. As I'm recording this, the bans are not in effect, but there is a certain card, or two cards, you might say, that weren't on the ban list to Fairy Time Raveler and Wilderness Reclamation. I blame myself, but I think we all hold a little bit of the blame here. Guys, if only we played Teferi in more decks. If we played Teferi in more decks, maybe this card would get banned. We're just not playing it enough. So, new semi-sarcastic resolution. I will play Teferi in every deck until Teferi is banned. I know. I know. I'm the hero you... You, the hero you need right now. I understand. You can stop applauding for me. No, no, no. Keep applauding. Keep it coming. But we're going to play Teferi in Mono Red. Just you watch. We're going to play Teferi in Demir Flash. You'll see. We're going to play Teferi in Jun Food. I'll show you. And today, we're going to play Teferi, four Teferis in Teamer Reclamation. Because all you have to do is get a few white sources into the deck to run the card. We have four Triomes that make white mana. We have four Fabled Passages to go fetch a One of Planes. And we have four Teferis. And what does this do for the deck? It buys us time. It keeps the opponent from interacting with our Expansion Explosion nonsense. It's actually not that insane. So basically we have two cards that are somewhat broken in Wilderness Reclamation and Teferi Time Raveler who weren't affected by the bands. We're going to put them in the same deck and see if a hybrid version can wreak the havoc that just good old regular Wilderness Reclamation would wreak. So, we're going to Ladder. Ranks just reset. We're going to see what we can do and get to Diamond. We might still play against Jeskai Luka, but in my opinion, bring it on, baby. And if you don't want to run this version, but you're looking for a good Teamer Reclamation deck, I would pop Teferi out and just put in Brazen Borrower. For a lot of the same effect, it can come in really handy. The rest of the deck you've probably seen, Wilderness Reclamation, uh, Expansion Explosion got a huge upgrade, not in the form of any particular card, but in the form of a hotkey shortcut in your settings. If you hit Q and Q at the same time, it floats all mana. Yeah, there it is. Float all, double tap Q. Q, Q. Float all the mana so we don't have to do the manual taps for Reclamation. So, you know, I'll probably forget um, a few times to even do that because it's still very new. And there you go. Other than that, we're just going to go torture people with not one broken card, but two broken cards. And maybe, maybe if we all commit to playing this card until absolutely everybody is miserable, they'll figure out that they need to ban Teferi Time Raveler. But until then, if you're not playing for Teferis, you're a part of the problem. Flawless logic. <laughs> Let's dive in. Let the nonsense begin. This hand is a keeper. It doesn't have white mana, but it also doesn't have Teferi. Our opponent's showing us Lurus, so Scorching Dragonfire will go to work. But we are looking at potential turn three Wilderness Reclamation on the play, and Ginger Brute is here. All right. I think it's a gross spiral, but let's see what our opponent does. If they go in for all that glitters, I might just get rid of it now. Sentinel's eyes, not that bad. Oh, we're going for double. Well, we can still gross spiral now, Wilderness Reclamation, and kill it before the untap if we mark our end step. So let's do that. I guess I'll be set up for Teferi if I play this now. What land? I guess green? Wilderness Reclamation? So, decision time. I do think we Dragonfire this now. 
but then we let the shields down for dispute. The opponent could just play Lurus, but I think I'm okay with that. I don't want the opponent to have protection available for this Ginger Brute. All right, the bounty is here. Let's see if they suit it up. Okay, they've got an Aegis and an Aegis. All right. Oh, just like we drew it up in practice, kids. All right. This isn't a fight you can win. <laughs> it is not a fight you can win. That is accurate. We have Growth Spiral into Teferi. We don't have the mana for the Flame Sweep yet, but we will. The Flame Sweep might not be good. Our opponent's showing us Yorian, but I think this is a keep. We'll want some counter spells if they are playing the Yorian deck we all fear, Jeskai Luka, in its final days of standard. I guess they could run Mystical Dispute. Let's just get this played. We definitely don't want to lose it to a dispute. We found our red source. Now we need Wilderness Reclamation. Earth the Melitus. So we can Teferi minus on the token, which is actually a pretty big deal so that their Luka doesn't have that target because Flame Sweep can interact with the other tokens. We really hope they don't have a Narset though. That's more like it gonna feel bad if they have Narset here because we didn't have a second blue to counter it okay they have the omen this is good we can minus the teferi take out the wall and then we use the flame sweep to get rid of the one ones drawing steam vents is pretty good but i think we can play a tap land here yeah let's get a tap land onto the field i guess i'm not taking into account if I'd have to use expansion for anything. So I'll pay the two life. I doubt it's going to come down to two life, but we'll see. You guys might get to rub that in my face in a few turns. All right, they can't play Luca this turn. They can play Fires. The question is, do I want to make a shark and ambush one of these or just flame sweep it? And I think the answer is to flame sweep it. Oh, that sucks. It's gonna make Mystical Dispute bad. Just go for something blue. Thank you. At least I can hit that with the Dispute before the Dispute becomes trash. I know some of you want me to slam the Shark Typhoon. You guys are crazy. You freaking... you're animals. I kind of love it. All right, that's a tap land, but Fires is fixing mana. But let's see the play. What's it going to be? Just going in for Yorian. Want to blink that Omen of the Sun, huh? All right. And the Fires, even though you only cast one spell for free. Weird. All right, I don't think they have interaction. Let's go ahead and make our shark. We're still going to have to figure out what to do about Yorian, though. Hmm. Another alternative is to expansion or explode upon one of the tokens and then bounce the other one so the opponent has no tokens, but they can always exile the Yorian. I think we just want to have this creature and draw a counter spell ASAP. Another Teferi. All right. What I want to do is bounce fires and make them replay it. We could also pick on the tokens. If there are no tokens, the opponent might try to Luka this. That's just as bad though. Well, let's think. At least right now we have Explosion. If the opponent goes for Luka on a token, we can blow it up. The other option is to just bounce these away. 
They're not using their fires very well right now. But they do have to play it in order to play a Luka. But then they still can do both of that in one turn. This is tough. I think I'm going to go after the tokens, actually. The opponent played that Yorian way before they really want to. I think that's a sign. I think they're they're giving me the sign that they need them. And that Wilderness Reclamation is a big draw. Sorry, I'm late. Let's try this. Wilderness Wreck. No attacks. Untap. If they block, I can explode away the Yorian. That's pretty good. Right? Here's Luca. They'll go for the minus targeting the Yorian. Here it comes. We need these three cards to be pretty good. We'll see. Oh, they scoop it up. They've had enough. Good. <laughs> Game was going to get very, very painful. <laughs> I think. Hey guys, the curse of the audio glitch strikes again. So this is some over the top commentary of myself. I am actually put my webcam right over top of me hitting play on the VOD. So let's dive in. Being ranked, I'm trying to tell you a complete story, and sometimes when an audio glitch happens, I don't want to cut part of that story, especially if the game is good. So I hope you trust me to show you something interesting. We're looking at a hand with a Teamer Triome, a Jeskai Triome, a Castle Vantress, a Steam Vents, and a really weird keep, quite frankly. And looking at it, I'm like, well, I have all the mana, and if I have Wilderness Reclamation, I'm good. If we're up against Winota, Flame Sweep can keep Winota from running away with the game. So I think if this was something other than a flame sweep, it would be hard to keep, but I end up keeping the hand. The opponent opens on stomping grounds. We smash the triumphs in succession here. And the Uro is a really good draw. The Uro means we can stand up to most of what our opponent does as well as get ahead and ramp. So Kroll Harpooner hits the battlefield. Gruel. We're actually up against some kind of a Gruel aggro. It could still be a Winota weirdo deck, but probably Gruel aggro. So just Uro here. The Flame Sweep can take it out later. There aren't many things that will permanently buff its toughness. So here's Uro. Here is another Triome. And things are moving just fine. We're not under huge pressure, but then Annex hits the field. Annex versus Flame Sweep is interesting. So the new plan becomes we want to set up a flame sweep that we copy, and then it will sweep up some of the tokens and the annex. But what I'm thinking about here, and what I'm probably talking about, is Questing Beast. Usually on turn four, especially if I play a Teferi, the opponent will slam a Questing Beast. If they play a Questing Beast and hold their annex, then copying a flame sweep takes care of the Questing Beast so much better. So I decided to go with Teferi. We sort of want him to end up in the graveyard anyway. And Uro, of course, can bring uh, Exile the Teferi to come back, gain us some more life. And I don't want to hold up an expansion. I'm not sure what spell I would be hoping to copy. It's not worth two life here, so another tap land hits the battlefield. It's actually weird when I'm not playing the game to be talking about it. Uh, this is strange. All the pressure's off me. I know what's going to happen. So the opponent actually playing out Annex and a Pelt Collector here, bring, building an, either, an even wider board for me to copy my Flame Sweep against. And with that becoming the plan after a little bit of consideration, we're going to play the tap land and say go. What we're mostly talking about is if there's any reason to do this now. Is the opponent going to use a pump spell or something to blow out a play like Flame Sweep into an expansion? And now we wait and see if the opponent will commit a Questing Beast or some other card to the board to grow the Pelt Collector. And there is the Questing Beast. And you can see, like, I'm... <laughs> I, I can see my face. You can't see it. My face is covering my other face, but I get this goofy smile. I'll stop referencing it since you can't see it. 
And now the question is, do we flame sweep now or later? If we sweep now, we kill one more token from the annex because the token gets created before the second flame sweep resolves. So that's why we make our move. And there we go. Pelt Collector, Crawl Harpooner, dead. A pair of satyrs coming from the annex, but they're on the battlefield to meet a brutal end at the hand of the second flame sweep that was copied. But there's still three tokens left over because of the questing beast and the annex hardened in the forge that died. From here, we're talking about the graveyard. The graveyard has almost enough cards to bring back Uro, but it's one short. So what we're going to do is consider that next turn we can crack Fabled Passage, bring Uro back, gain some sweet life. So we're going to play the tap land this turn, and our plan is to use Thassa's intervention to counter what they play, or to dig for cards, and then bring Uro back next turn, and be in a really great spot with Uro gaining life, drawing cards. The Castle Embroth is a bit more pressure, because the opponent can play around counter magic and deal 6 damage, if they chose to. The clock is on them right now as they consider using the castle. When they don't, I'm pretty happy, because it means I do get to counter something with intervention. Annex Hard in the Forge is a worthy target. Double check the mana. You can pay two to make them pay four. Leaves up an expansion for god knows what. What would I expansion? A light up the stage? Maybe. I don't know. But now we draw Shark Typhoon off the top. There is some brief consideration to slamming the Typhoon and saying go, but with my next spell being Uro, which doesn't make a shark token, I dismiss that. We go ahead and activate the passage into the library, get a land, and bring back the Titan. Little mistake, I should have left the Castle Vantress untapped just in case we drew an untapped blue source and wanted to use it to scry. Although I am expecting I'll probably make a shark out of the turn. And then it's to ferry off the top, which is a pretty automatic play. What do you, how to use to ferry here? There's some debate. Do we want to plus it and try to save it to hit something else? But with the castle on the board, the opponent could just attack it down with the satyrs. So let's draw the darn card. Let's just draw the darn card and bounce one of the 1-1s, one reduce the pressure. Teferi ending up in the graveyard is again fine because of Uro. Expansion Explosion 2x, starting to breathe down the opponent's neck here. And here's Galia uh, of the Endless Dance, pretty sweet actually. With the satyrs from Annex, it gives each of them plus one, plus one. The opponent flirts with sending Gal Galia face, but they find the right play, which is you send Galia at the Teferi and a satyr at face so that I have to take two damage if I want to kill the Galia, which is easily the thing we most want to block. The opponent tosses a Pelt Collector to draw two. And we still want Galia dead. It represents the most power and toughness because it also pumps the satyrs. There's some risk of a punish if the opponent has a second Galia for next turn, but it's okay. I think you take that gamble. Bonecrusher Giant joins the field. And now with a breeding pool off the top, an opponent at 20 life with a Bone Crusher, a pair of 1-1s. One what I'm talking about right now is Ember Cleave, which is if the opponent goes for an Ember Cleave, what we want to be able to do is explosion the creature that they target with an Ember Cleave. Also, if they commit the Castle Embreth because they don't have enough red mana to do Embreth and Ember Cleave, we can respond to that by exploding on the giant or whatever the largest creature happens to be. The opponent taking some time on this definitely, there's something going on, right? And then they move in for a Gem Razor. So, Mutated Gem Razor. If we kill the token in response, the 4-4 still enters the battlefield, but it can't attack this turn, but we let it go. My main concern is still Ember Cleave, or getting them to commit their mana to the castle, which is why we just say go here. And then sure enough, it's the sword. The sword is lit, the opponent tries to be legit, but at the point where they target the Gem Razor with the Ember Cleave, now it's time to unleash the power of Explosion so that we don't take that nasty double strike hit. 
three mystical disputes is not exactly what you want to see. Now I try to make sure that I know how cards work. We're looking at an opponent with 14 life, and if you can spot the lethal, good for you. Took me actually a minute. I, of course, didn't want to get it wrong. We have our land drop for turn, and we get to throw a land onto the battlefield with the Uro. So that means that the explosion can be for 8 damage to the face while the Uro attacks for 6. So eventually, it's like, all right, I think I got my math right. Let's do it. Go fetch the land. Doesn't matter which one. Send off an explosion for 8 and that will wrap up this particular matchup. The Gruel aggro deck not getting over the finish line. And no Wilderness Reclamation required. Uro just absolutely carrying, carrying this particular match. So let's do another one. Unfortunately, the bug affected two games instead of one. So let's dive right into number two, shall we? This is a tough one. This is a pair of triomes, a teamer triome and a Jeskai triome on the draw. So with a 28 land deck, we're really likely, like just about every other draw step is likely to hit. So if I hit a land, I have a lot of options like Teferi and Uro. Our opponent has Yorian showing, most likely a Jeskai Luka kind of deck. So the idea is we don't have a ton of great interaction for that deck right now. We'd have to draw into it anyway. But the Teferi can take out a token. Scorching Dragonfire can instant speed take out a token or a Teferi. I end up keeping and we rip two lands off the top like a boss. This turns a big consideration of do we represent a counter spell? Is there something we might Scorching Dragonfire? I decide that we might Scorching Dragonfire or Narset. Our opponent could be... They, could, they have the Teamer Triome, but they might have that green in the deck for Mythos of Aluna. This could still be Jeskai Luka. And the opponent shocks out a Temple Garden to play a Gilded Goose, which is a really strange play. And then they pass. So why did they shock when they could have paid the green mana for it? Are they playing around Quench? That's what I ultimately decide. And I decide to just go after the Goose. Just get that thing off the field. But this is a sign of Winota. And there is a Yorian Winota pile that got played, I think, by Seth Manfield on day one of the Arena Open. So I, I decide when I see Goose without the usual cat oven stuff, it's got to be Winota. Now it's time, to, it's time to play Uro. Time to just get ramping, get our cards onto the field, make these sharks relevant. And we really need to, de we need to dig for counter magic right away. Illyrios basically confirms the Winota, and another land drop also means that the opponent doesn't have any more untapped green in their hand, or they wouldn't have shocked for Temple Garden, but they have more land. So I'm putting them on like another sacred land, maybe. And we play a Teferi, minus three, bounce the reflection. So right now, Winota doesn't do anything. Say go. Keeping the Fable Passage open to not give away our Shark Typhoon. If we go fetch a basic, it becomes really clear we have a Typhoon. Just because of how it holds priority, whereas Fable Passage holds priority forever. The opponent slams the Yorian to set up the Enraptured with Reflection. This to me, it's a pretty good value play, but it's pretty medium as far as Yorians go. This to me says that they have a Neoform or a Winota, and that they plan to play it next turn because they really want the Reflection to get the trigger and the Yorian to get the trigger. So I go digging with a Shark Typhoon, what we're trying to do is hit a counter spell or something to get rid of Winota right away. And with the Thassa's intervention off the top, we did hit what we needed very badly. So now it's about how to use the rest of the mana. There's a little bit of an oops here where I fetched the wrong thing with Fable Passage. I should fetch a green. I got my triomes confused. Forgot that this triome doesn't produce green. So we end up floating a blue mana and then playing Growth Spiral off a, a, a tapped green mana that untaps from Reclamation. So yeah, a bit of a bad look, especially since we know we have to hold up Intervention and holding it up for Neoform might mean that we need to put three mana into it. So 
as you see me tank a little bit on that one, that's the main thing that we're looking at. Just kind of lamenting my growth spiral decisions. And then I say, I don't know what I'm going to draw off the growth spiral. I may as well add a mana. We might end up using it. But let's make sure we tap this for green. Use the mana to play a cheaper growth spiral. We do hit a land. Now I have to debate whether or not to shock this land. Is there a situation? And when making these decisions, you have to say, is there any situation where I'll need that mana? And at the same time, you look at your opponent's battlefield and you say, okay, what kind of pressure are they putting me under? You also have to think about what you're telling your opponent about your hand if you shock. And I'm pretty much sending a, I'm, I'm sending a clear message that I have a very live hand. So they go for Adventurous Impulse. Revealing another Illyrios, which isn't ideal for them. But now here's the Neoform. And the Neoform goes to fetch a 5-5 five, five Winota that would have two triggers in this spot. So it's a pretty easy, we must counter this now. The Winota must be stopped. Then we have to figure out how to get another counter spell, because we survived a Neoform. There's always, it seems like there's always another Winota right around the corner against this deck. And we take a frickin' 7 on the chin. So the clock is quick, but the graveyard is filling for Uro. And Uro can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this group of cards pretty well. To ferry off the top, that's always a lovely sight. We can get rid of the reflection to make the Winota a lot worse for next turn. There's also another Reclamation we can play, and we have Castle Vantress to start scrying through the deck. But to ferry first, it draws a card. We know we want that reflection gone. And another Thassa's Intervention is a, a wonderful string of luck at this stage in the game to keep another Winota from resolving. So I decide to keep Uro in the holster. I think the opponent's going to Yori and attack the Teferi, and that Uro can wait. And two Reclamations gives us time to make a 5-5 Shark Typhoon and hopefully block and defend Teferi and then also hold up Intervention. So, it seems like the best of both wor worlds. Big old shark to take on Yorian and keep Teferi around, and we have Thassa's Intervention available for a Winota. The big problem is that we only want to counter Winota, because if the opponent plays something to get rid of the shark, do we want to counter that? Not really. They might follow up with Winota, which might hit an agent, which might steal the shark. So, it's not a risk we can even take. So the opponent actually has some interaction, unexpected a bit. Brazen Borrower, just blink your shark. Again, countering to protect it here is just saying Winota me. So I'm not, go I'm not willing to make that gamble. So Teferi's gone. More fuel for Uro, it's okay. And here's a Deputy of Detention, and this is a really... This decision is tough. What would you do? I have Uro, who can counter race Yorian really well while gaining value. I have Castle Vantress to try to scry into answers. I'm looking in my graveyard, like what solves the deputy thing? There's two more Teferis, there's a Scorching Dragonfire, two Scorching Dragonfires in the deck, and there's three Expansion Explosions, I believe, still in the deck. There's ways to remove the deputy. There's also two more Wilderness Reclamations. I could always draw another one. Giving up my mana advantage and keeping my counter spell seems pretty loose, but if we ever get desperate, we can just fire the intervention off and try to hit a way to remove the deputy. But until we're desperate, we can scry and try to find it with our temple. And of course, my scry immediately is two lands to the bottom, so uh, the flame sweep off the top doesn't really get it done. But Uro gets to come out. Let me see what we can find. Oof. Man, this one, I, I said is, I can be relaxed because I know what happens, but in this one I'm actually pretty tense because that deputy decision is definitely controversial and I'm curious what people would do. But we're rewarded. We actually rip another wilderness reclamation to keep things going. 
And now the opponent with a temple. And they're down to just known information in hand and Illyria. So we know that they don't have Winota. So if we think we can find a lethal, it might be worth firing off the intervention, which I do con I contemplate. <laughs> I contemplate. But then there's um, a reflection to block the Uro potentially. So I end up using the Scry instead and still holding intervention so that I don't lose to Winota off the top in a series of very unfortunate top decks. Because in this situation, the more time, like time really feels like it's on my side. It's hard to race Uro. The castle will eventually get me through my deck and find what I need. The flame sweep will keep at least some of the pressure off me from Brazen Borrower and the reflection. Timer's on the opponent here. And then Uro heads to battle. Another land. When you play 28 lands, sometimes you draw a lot of them, but we're halfway through the deck, still saying, where is Expansion Explosion? I fire off the castle on my main phase to avoid more manual taps. And we see another pair of land to the bottom, please. Oof. Add the mana to the mana pool. And then scry again. Still digging. What do we see? It's land and it's land. So sequence of just mana, piece of mana after piece of mana here. Borrower hitting the battlefield. We're setting up for a flame sweep on our opponent's turn. We don't want the Illyrios to untap. I also want them to commit to combat. In case they have Winota, we don't want to use our mana early and then not have enough. So the opponent sweeps before we... They scoop before we can sweep. Um, strange ending to the game, but then we look back on the battlefield. I think the opponent thought that they left themselves dead by accident because they are at six life with no untapped blockers for an Uro. So if the card in their hand is a land, they might be dead. But they do have a food token, so they could have survived another turn. I do understand a little bit of tilt from playing Reclamation when they're scrying through your deck and you're trying to get over the finish line. I have scooped in that spot many times, and they certainly could have the read that I have a counter spell from the amount of time I was taking on my decisions. But I think this is a win, and that's basically what I'm trying to justify as I go over what I scried to the bottom. I think that I'm going to win this game. I think this is a turn where... With the opponent having to eat food to stay alive, I'd probably fire off Thassa's intervention and see if I could find the lethal card. So uh, let me know in chat if you think I should do this talking over thing when my audio glitches. Do you enjoy it? When it's a particularly good game, it's a chance for me to practice some commentary skills while still showing you the game in question, which would otherwise be deleted. So I'm curious in chat, do you like this? Should I just delete those videos? and move on. What works for you? This hand is pretty sweet. There is some tension with the growth spiral here because we can't cast it on turn two. But I think I keep this hand. Lurus, it's gonna come at you fast. Better be ready. If it's cycling, I feel okay. I have a way to bounce back a fox that gets going. Maybe we find a flame sweep. We don't have a Mystical Dispute, but I don't think we want one in this matchup. Thassa's Intervention is at least one flare that we can counter. Our opponent with the Plains and the Bounty. Okay, so it's that deck, and right off the top is the Flame Sweep. We want to fetch a green with this. Then we'll try to use Teferi to set back the opponent's whatever, however many enchantments they have on this creature. Pride mate. Ooh. So I guess I have to set the pride mate back now. And then they gain the life again. So the flame sweep won't hit. Is there a way to do this better? Maybe we growth spiral. We need to come up with a way to Teferi and flame sweep. I guess Uro helps with this a little. Okay, so we'll Uro. Land would be nice. 
No such luck. How am I going to bounce this and then keep it from being a 3-3 when I cast the Flame Sweep? That takes six mana. Okay, they have Hushbringer. That dies to the Flame Sweep. They're low on land. Another blue or another green? Another blue lets me cast um, Expansion on the Flame Sweep. But I only have one green, which could come back to bite me around Uro time. I'm going to grab blue, but I don't feel great about it. Okay, they do miss the land drop, and now the Scorching Dragonfire. But they go up to a 4-4 again next turn. Oh, this is tough. I think that there's a case here for casting Thassa's Intervention and just trying to make sure I hit my land drop so that next turn I can Teferi. There's a risky line where I play Teferi and I bounce this. I guess we can... Mm. See, this is also tough. I could say go... <laughs> we also have to watch out for the life's bounty. This is insanely tough. And if I top deck the land, we're fine. That's all I would need is the land. Oh wait, I need a red or a white source. All right, I'm just going to try to set up my mana. Hit my land drop and try to get the right play later. Okay. Please let them miss on land. Give me a chance. If they have some, a land and like a good play here that takes advantage of me, I don't know if we can recover. Here they come. 6-6 six, six, pride mate, we've got to bounce it. If they just have mana up though, the bounty protects it. Oh, another dragon fire, okay. So we can play this, they sacrifice the bounty to protect it. The other thing is I can dragon fire the bounty. If I'm going to do that, I need to do it on their turn, right? Right. So we say go, we dragon fire the bounty, or we cast the flame sweep to kill these two. And we do it on their turn. <laughs> All right, here we go. Maybe I shouldn't have tapped the green. I can't spiral now. Ugh, I think auto tapper just got me. God's willing? How do I make them tap their mana? All right, this is fine. I'm not that worried about the Hushbringer. They choose red, sure. So they're still going to lose the bounty here. Do they have another willing? Is that the, the issue? Oof. That could be really bad, but Teferi gets around it. Down to five. My turn. No doesn't get around it enough. Not good enough. All right, so now what do we have to try to draw? An Uro? You show remorse. I'll show you. Oh, I've done the hero thing. Not good enough either. I misplayed this whole game bad. On the draw, but we have Flame Sweep, Dispute, a Typhoon we can cycle for nothing, a Growth Spiral we can't cast. I think this is the kind of silly hand that you keep. We'll draw into a green. It will get better. We have Dispute or Flame Sweep, which are two different kinds of interaction against different kind of decks, but it ensures, I think, that we won't get run over. And right off the top. It is a little awkward because I'm not holding up Mystical Dispute, but I want Gross Spiral available for next turn. And hopefully the opponent doesn't punish me too hard. There are cards like Thought Erasure that could get me, but they don't have it. Yeah, let's say no to that. 
Could have growth spiraled into that, actually. Yeah, that's a mistake. What is wrong with me right now? I'm just not doing it. But I think we hold. I don't think we run the Uro out here. If the opponent counters it, then we're tapped out for the turn. All right, they make no other plays. All right, go Spiral. Let's focus up. Still plenty of good magic to be played here. Do we cycle to hit a land? I don't think so. And rewarded. And I guess we can also try the Uro. Raisin Borrower coming out. Let's... Well, Flame Sweep deals with that. But I still think we can just say no. Might as well. We're not doing much else with our mana. It's on curve. Forces the opponent to figure themselves out. Looks like they're taking Demir Flash for a spin. Six mana. Pretty good spot. And the opponent with no plays. So they're feeling reactive. All right, I think here we cycle for a, a shark and put some pressure on them. Worst case scenario, we still draw a card. So even if they remove it, we're moving through our deck. And the shark is here. Ooh, Teferi. They counter it, we can Uro. Let's attack first. Uh, I guess there is a chance that some kind of an ambush block could, co could come down. But what can't cast a row? This can't. And then we tap like this. Green, green, blue, blue. Yep. And there is the sabotage. We could fight. Would we like to fight? I don't think we have to fight. The fairy's good. But we're the one being proactive here. We've been a quench. All right. Let's attack. I wonder if that means they have another quench and I should play around it. But I don't think so. I think forcing all their counter magic is the right play. If they counter this, it won't be long before Uro comes back again. Quite the tank for this one, but they re let Uro resolve. Your growth spiral isn't ideal right now, but... It is something that can go to the graveyard and help get Uro back after the opponent kills it, which I'm sure something that kills this is coming up. Yep, Heartless Act. Otherwise, why let it resolve? And what were they thinking about? They still have some kind of a counter spell, and they're trying to hang on to it. I'm guessing it's a sabotage. If it was a quench, I think that would be snap it off. So let's put them on a sinister sabotage. Okay, they also have something that interacts with the board. If it's a Brazen Borrower, I think that that would happen pretty aggressively. So, maybe it's a Heartless Act. The opponent's taking the hit. Let's say go. See what they've got. Blacklance Paragon. Okay, that's an easy card to Flame Sweep. We can wait until our opponent's turn for that. I want them to counter it, so if they draw a counter spell and they use it on a flame sweep, I'm happy, so we're not doing this on upkeep. And that will be the last draw for the opponent. On the play, we've got Dragon Fires against Luris, and we have Mystical Dispute if they are running cycling, so this is a keep. I wonder if I'm supposed to Fabled Passage. I feel like I am. And we can get white mana to set up to fairy. <gasps> In case we draw it. I love it. Let's do it. And we can't grow Spiral off this mana. That's the big downside. But are we going to draw to fairy or grow Spiral? Hmm. Do we shock? I think we do. Having Dragonfire available seems pretty nice. And the life gain comes bring comes right back from Uro here. I think our opponent's going to give us a target, and they do. 
So one target down. The other dragon fire we really want to save for Uro. But we could say go and use this dispute, which is otherwise not very good. I think I like that. Yep, pretty good. And, uh, and there is our growth spiral. All right. And we can play it. And I guess we get other green. Makes sense. We'll slow roll it because it also makes Dragonfire available. But Uro is already coming back. This is going pretty well. We have four cards in the graveyard. This is five. This is six. Our opponent with a life's bounty. Hmm. While they have no targets, we might want to exile that. Obviously, if they play Loris and have this protection available, that's a big problem. Hmm, we don't have another green. A bit of a rip. Now if we want to bring Uro back, we have to get the Triome into play. And we, can't, we can't play the Gross Spiral here. That's a bit sad. But let's get this gone. Can it sacrifice to defend itself? Oh, it can. I thought I would get to exile it here. I'm wrong. That's a pretty big mistake. I don't know what's up with me today. Definitely not quite myself, but not quite ready to give up. So we could cycle this, but I think we actually want to keep hitting land. And I definitely want the mana. Green mana for Uro next turn seems pretty good. What else could I play for three mana this turn? I guess I could play a Teferi if I hit it. Shark Tornado. Sorry, Typhoon. Yep, start the Uro party. Bring back the Alcide. Protect the Uro, of course. So do I make the 1-1 one, one and draw? Or do I play the Typhoon? Oh, they're going for a ghost form. Well, now drawing Teferi is really important. Although, hmm. Yeah, I guess I'll dig. That was a pretty risky play by the opponent, but we draw the Teferi. Wow. All right. And I think that that's the play, because we don't want to give the opponent a chance to untap from this position. If I draw the land, I get to Reclamate, which is great. And I have a blocker for the bounty, kind of. Another one. Interesting. And they have the dead weight. That's brutal, too. But they do have to tap out again if they want to play Lurus and enchant it. That's how it was meant to happen. So we keep putting them off. They, they certainly have the tools here, and we keep putting them off. I didn't need a land here. That Mystical Dispute might be good enough, though, if they don't draw an untapped land. I am not going to sit this way. This might be a bad idea. Untapped land. Do they draw untapped land? I still have 20 in my deck. And there's 40. <laughs> oh my goodness. I forgot about a Fable Passage, so that number is not perfect. But they don't have the untapped land. We get to Dispute. That's a big deal. Shut down the Lurus train, at least for now. There's a land. Let's do the Reclamation. Come on, come on, do the Reclamation with me. QQ, the new shortcut in case you don't know it, to float all your mana. Let's go. Woman of the Dead? Okay, they're all in on this Lurus nonsense. Like, Lurus is the only thing they're trying to do, but Explosion can go right over the top. And they can they can do all the silly things with Lurus they could possibly want to do. Explosion might just kill them anyway. Could use another Reclamation, though. <laughs> oh, man. 
born for this level of dirtle. And it's really good against aggro decks. It's not it's not a joke. All that glitters. Get it! Okay, that makes it hard to kill you. And we didn't draw another reclamation. So, exiling this won't stop the ghost form thing from bringing it back. We could expansion. Let's see, if this goes away, this goes to the graveyard, this becomes a 1, 2, 3, plus 3, plus 3, so it's a 4-4, four, four, so that's still too much. So I think I shoot this, draw four, then Scorching Dragonfire the Lurus. This will die, and then Lurus comes back. No, I need to copy a Scorching Dragonfire onto both of them, and then I need to shoot it for four? Okay. Move dangerously. All right. Do we want it want this one to resolve second? Does it matter? A little. All right. Stays gone. This comes back. Now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, ten. Oh, it's a flame sweep. I should have held one more for a flame sweep. I was thinking that I needed to hit. I was thinking that I absolutely needed to hit something else. That's not the case. I thought I needed to hit another. Anyway, doesn't matter now. I thought I needed to hit another dragon fire. But I was wrong. Um, all right. Get rid of you and you, I think. Now I have to kill them with what? I have to kill them with sharks. 25 cards to go. He's slamming all that glitters. Feels good, man. Here's to fairy. I can kill them with Uro too. All right, now we're set up for this comes back into play. I guess we want to kill that now. Actually, we have two flame sweeps, so this is fine. All right, bring back the Uro. Fun game. Close. A lot going on. Exactly what you're looking for. Alright, put that out. Put that out. Tapped. Throw a spiral. Put this on the board. Go ahead and crack it. Grab the last island. So there's a big shark typhoon that could get in there. That one's at 27, so this is going to take work. I actually don't have a castle. Maybe all I want to do here is cast the Triome. I want at least nine mana open. So, yeah, let's cycle. There's a castle. Now the opponent can sack Omen of the Dead to scry to save the Mystic, but it's still not big enough to fight Uro. What we want them to do is commit the Lurus, then commit whatever they're casting with it, then Flame Sweep. I could Mystical Dispute so they can't get anything back, but with this mana open, they're going to cast something here with Lurus. And when they target with the Lurus, probably the Kai's Ghost Form on the Lurus, if we're to learn anything, then we play Flame Sweep. Here we go. Now, 
Have I finally gotten rid of all your toys? God, okay. Wow. What a wacky game. What a wacky game. And we are back with the outro notes for the cool kids club. And here's what's up. The deck's good. It's very good. I feel like I'm only losing to my own misplays. And I, I made plenty of misplays uh, playing the deck today. One of them cost me a game. The other is not so much. But I can tell that this deck takes practice and a certain amount of discipline. Team of Reclamation is a harsh mistress. So if you want to commit to a deck for at least a few months, this is a pretty solid list. And with or without the Teferi, is this version with Teferi better than the version without it? Only in some matchups. In plenty of matchups, Teferi doesn't really matter. In the matchups where the opponent is going to try to counter and interact with you, uh, blue-white control, for example, having Teferi is a lot better. So in matchups like aggro and such, if you had Brazen Borrower, the effect would be the same and Teferi didn't really matter. So a little bit of both is the answer, and it's kind of an acquired taste whether or not you want to spam the Teferi. But like I said in the intro, we are committed to raising awareness of the Teferi problem, so I will be spamming the Teferi until the nonsense has ceased. So uh, with that in mind, let's see what I spam Teferi in tomorrow. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Please remember to like, subscribe, and whether you love Teferi, hate Teferi, are you going to spam Teferi till it's banned? Are you going to pretend there's no problem and ignore it? Let me know in the comments. I will see you next time. Goodbye.